Welcome back, everyone. We do have ourselves a, another best of seven. A ZVP rematch between the top left here, Hero, for DKZ, and bottom right for Basilisk, Rainer. Earlier on in this tournament, they did play, and Rainer was able to barely beat out Hero. You'd think I'd be very sure of that, because I cast him just literally two days ago. Uh, I was correct, yes. So Rainer sent Hero down to the lower bracket, and then things have transpired. And so to race ahead here, because the second to last series is going to be played in Masters Coliseum, we had Serral knock down Rainer to the lower bracket with a 4-0 in the ZVZ. So then that means that Hero has made his way through a couple of really strong names, such as Solar and Dark, to once again be rematched versus the Italian Stallion, and the winner will go on to face sell in a potential ZVZ, potential ZVP, best of nine. One of the very few tournaments in probably like all of esports actually that you know actually use a best of nine. Pretty sure. Doesn't happen very often. Anywho, so the last time these guys played, it was a couple of interesting games. I want to say at least one Kind of certified banger, and then one kind of weird one. Ooh, cheeky cheeky. This is not real. This is a fake, but I love the cheek. Because we had Hero possibly, probably, kind of, for sure, throwing a game a little bit. Um, the finale? Was it the final game? But he definitely blinked a little too aggressively and did a very Hero-like thing. We had Rainer make some astounding comebacks, which is a very Rainer thing as well. But Hero was also throwing out a lot of different builds, which is also his positive thing, I guess. He's got the negative Hero blinks, but he's got the positive builds. You know, the Adept builds were effective. The Triple Forge would have been better. <laughs> I wonder if we'll throw that out again here. And then Raynor was typically playing into the macro game. I'm just changing up whether he went into melee or roaches, roach baneling, pure roach. But I don't believe he did any cheesing. And it was a best of seven this time around, so a little bit more of an extended series compared to the best of five. And I would expect, actually, Rainer to throw in something a little more aggressive. Certainly, again, one of those mid-game all-ins that did, did occur or didn't occur in the last best of five. Again, you'd think I know, because it was like two days ago. But basically, this whole last week has been a blur of StarCraft things. There's so much great StarCraft leading up to even more great StarCraft with I Am Katowice happening in just a few days. Probably even already done by the time this video is out, actually. The Twilight Council is coming down. Hero looking to start things off in game one of this rematch with a build that was very effective. Rainer actually managed to kill the War Prism of the Adept Four Gate, which is usually a pretty good sign for the Zerg. But then still, it slipped up actually getting a surround on the Adept, so they actually lived and were able to cost efficiently trade against the Lings, kind of caused that chaos. Then there was the typical Zerg problem, which is that potential indecision. That's whether or not they should make Lings or drones. And I think Hero actually played that in a very frustrating way to not let Rainer ever feel comfortable. And he might be looking to do the same thing here for game number one. Start off with a bang. Resident Glaives is on the way. We are going to get possibly up to, yep, four gateways. One coming down right now at the front. And Rainer should know once again that this is not a Stargate opener. Probably off of the warp gate. Again, I wasn't actually looking at it, but probably was legit going for that first, which means you couldn't afford a Stargate, so that must be a Twilight Council. Plus, the longer you don't have an Oracle, the more it makes sense. But we can see that he's not uh, actually taking anything for granted. Still has the Queen stacked up as you would, just in case this was a fake. But isn't necessarily diving towards Spork Brawlers. He'll probably get one, as he did last time this happened. Because there is a possibility for a follow-up Dark Shrine to a start of Horizon and Glaive's build. Now, this time around, a Stalker has actually been built. But only a slight difference, I think, to the last time this was played. And I think the... The jig is still up for the most part. Uh, maybe, okay. There's actually a, I was going to say a lower number of drones, but they just built two extractors. So pretty much perfect on the 41, which is what we see the Zergs make the defense off of. But yet again, not going to be, oh my gosh. Oh, hold on. Whoa, even worse, actually. Wait a second. That Roachborn isn't done is what I was going to talk about, but we also do not have speed. Oh my God. Oh my good lord, actually. Speed not being done, Roach is not being out, means that there is really nothing to defend against this. 
However, a wall is pretty effective. So that wall will do the trick initially, but then the War Prism in the main base, that's another problem. And then if the Shades actually get through, if the wall is not created in time, this could be a huge issue. I mean, even if these four Adepts live, and then another four are built in the main base thanks to the War Prism, uh, the wall is actually just going to go down. No Transfuse available on a building building, and the Adepts have powered their way through. Wow, Rainer just completely... I mean, cut off guard, kind of. I not It's not so much that, but just like the build that he chose. Skipping that speed. Was that on purpose? I had just assumed that it was on the way, so that's on me. But obviously a very, very tough hold if you don't have speedlings and you don't have roaches. And I mean, even if he had slowlings, there wasn't even that many of them, but they you know, wouldn't really be helpful anyway. Follow up into disruptors. Rainer must acknowledge that this is a already very poor game for him. Oh, Warprism just slightly out of the way, nicely done. But he must acknowledge, as he barely saves the third hatch, that this is already a really bad start. And that's uh, at a certain point. Oh, the Warprism does go down. Hello. At a certain point, you might want to go ahead and just cut your losses and say, all right, well, this, this, this game sucked. <laughs> Not the way I started. I uh, wanted to start a best of seven, but it does happen, and unfortunately you do have at least three more games to try and recover, which, I mean, Rainer certainly has shown some of the best, um, like, mental stability in in the game. He's had so many comebacks, which is a real testament to his ability to think through desperate situations, whether that's being down 0-3 or, you know, being down in an individual game, but he's usually pretty good at it. So, if he did cut his losses, I think he'd be totally fine. But he's not going to go ahead and do that. Despite losing the third base and 15 drones to the Adept attack, he once again did kill the Warp Prism, so... You know, one really good thing, but then overall still a bad thing. Kind of similar to the last best of five where this Adept attack happened. And then the uh, follow-up, is that going to be the Immortal All-In? It is going to be Disruptors and then possibly into... Well, honestly, more of a macro game, maybe even into Colossus eventually. Because that third base is very much real. It was put down fairly quickly. This is something that uh, Rainer actually has not been able to scout because that speed has been missing. A slow Ling has not managed to walk its way across the map. So at this point, the Disruptors might be a little tough, but you could definitely do a two-base attack uh, with Disruptors. That's, you know, Immortals are a little more reliable, but Disruptors can do it too. And there's actually even like a one Colossus push on two bases with Disruptors first. It was actually a very popular build for a little while there. So, you know, again, we're hitting that point where the Zerg player might have a chance if they choose the droning and army production absolutely perfectly, but then can they do that? It looks like Rainer decided to just go for a lot of army. Only a couple more drones being made, but we do have plus one missile about to finish. Roach speed already done, and the Roach is moving across the map, hoping to find Hero's defenses a little bit lacking. However, Blink is almost done. Shield battery is up. More disruptors are prepared. And honestly, the soccer number is already almost beating the Roach number. So, you know, I don't think he's worried. <laughs> Very much not so. Even chasing down the Roaches, the War Prism kind of being an almost advanced scout. So, going to be careful with it. Queens are prepared. But this is Hero's pressure that still could end the game because of how bad this game has been for Rainer. You know, Hero's not really all in here. He's got all six gases. He's continuing to add on robo units. He does have the war prism. He's not grabbing a four, so I mean, it's somewhat dedicated, but Rainer is just in such a poor position. Yeah, this might not even be a contest. But the ideas are great. Getting as many ravages as possible, trying to set up some type of a surround, but the numbers simply are not there. Rainer's only ahead by 15 army supply when his army is inferior. He's really got nothing going for it. Uh, very aggressive blink forward. That is a hero thing to do, but then you do kind of cover that blink forward with the disruptor, so it makes a little bit more sense here. Or it's a little bit safer, I should say. Usually these blinks make sense. They just might be incorrect. <laughs> but the disruptors do cover your retreat a little bit. And with the warp prism still intact, you get a recall, actually, because roaches have gone for a counterattack uh, run by, but... The recall is probably going to take care of things. Maybe not before a couple of probes go down. And that has left the front line stalkers a little bit less in number. Rainer actually still reinforcing with advantage, advantage, obviously. Does manage to overcome that particular force. And the probe numbers are starting to get really low. 54 probes after 16 have been killed. I mean, that was a very effective run by. That was extremely effective. That caused the front lines 
to be much more manageable for Raynor, and it actually did a significant amount of economic damage. A couple of the disruptors have also gone down in the hubbub, so there's only two instead of four disruptors to worry about, and Raynor has lived another day. This guy is really good at making the comebacks happen. Overall, Hero is still the one that's in charge. Still on three bases, still with a higher worker count, still with even double upgrades on the way. I think one just got contaminated, which is pretty cool. And uh, still having the disruptors, which, I mean, they're going to add the potential one shot. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, no. Oh, please don't oh, throw the game away again. Oh, the blink board was so aggressive. Seeing the Ravagers just all alone like that was too tempting for Hero to not go for, but there were a decent amount of links. Not with upgrades this time, so it wasn't as terrible as their previous best of five, but Jesus, I think that was another mistake, because at the same time, another run by went back into the natural and main base, Lings this time, and killed 19 probes. So now finally, Hero is officially much farther down in the workers, in the economy, and Hero is letting this game slip through his fingers. Again, kudos to Raynor for staying in and making all of the correct moves. The way he handled the attack on his third base and still managed to survive, even with uh, about, what was it, like eight roaches going across the map, and then deciding to go for the Ling run by. I mean, a little bit of luck is involved. The Ling run by happening as Hero pulls the trigger on an overly aggressive blink. That's the combination that you can't necessarily predict, because you don't know Hero's going to do the almost suicidal blink that he does, but. It does work out in your favor as you get a combination of terrible events on the Protoss' side. So Rainer's really trying to make this comeback happen. He's still, just to be super clear, he's still in some trouble. <laughs> and that's, again, I think just more so showing how good of an opener Hero had. And hell, imagine if he didn't lose that War Prism in the main. I gotta imagine that would mean it is officially game over. But he did, and it gave him some time, and... Well, Rainer is a... Uh, I don't know, he's just really tough to actually kill, I guess. You give him just enough resources to get a handful of Ravagers, and it seems like he can do anything. Actually making his way to a fourth base, keeping slightly ahead of the worker count, just slightly. Every now and again, a couple more drones coming out, trying to get his own decent upgrades. His hero has finished up 2-1. Run by starting to be denied. His hero has obviously taken a less aggressive stance and actually is prioritizing. Trying to get this fourth base up. Let a run by to the top right, stop that base from being taken. It did look like that was Hero's intention. And we now have Hero going into Colossus, which I think is certainly going to add uh, more dependability in the army. The disruptors, while potentially potent, didn't really get a lot of great shots. Rainer was very good at splitting against them. Now you add in well-upgraded stalkers with a decent amount of Colossus with thermal lands and you're both maxed out, because it seems to be the trend here. They're both going to get maxed out. Again, the Protoss army is better. You throw in a couple of force fields, maybe, or maybe some Archons get added on as the gases get taken. Whatever it is, and it just gets stronger and stronger. But at this point, seeing as things have kind of evened up, seven probes go down to a lot of Banelings, actually. That probably wasn't worth it for Raynor. Um... Now we're at this point, it is worth again discussing how some of the games went Raynor's direction in their best of five. And that was that Raynor managed to get to an army that looks a lot like this, Ling, Baneling, Roach, Ravager, and was up against an army of a Protoss that probably even looked better than this actually, with a lot more Archons, maybe some Storm. And he was able to defeat that high quality Protoss army with some really nice army movement. But at this point, Oh, the Lings in the backside. Exactly, yes, exactly. I was like, the Force Field denying some of the Banelings, making them single file, making these Colossus more effective. The Stalkers of the Big Old Concave and Disruptors, still with their shots, will actually end the game. But it was those types of movements that we saw for the 14 minutes here in this game, the type of army movement and army usage that Raynor was showing right there, is how he was able to make some of those wins happen in their best of five. And I really think that this was just still a lot to do with how far ahead Hero was. That he still ended up taking all of that damage, really missing his timings to kill him earlier, to then having to wait for a max out army to actually finally get the easy looking win. Rainer has come to play, that's for sure. But Hero seems to have found a bit of a weakness for Rainer. Let's see if he continues to exploit it. And in the top left of now a Golden Aura up one, it is Hero. 
In the bottom right, we do have Rainer. So Rainer, you know, I I missed whether or not the warp gate was faked, so I'll try and pay attention this time. I missed that Rainer just straight up wasn't getting speed, and I'll try and pay attention to it this time. But what a wacky way to start off the best of seven series. I guess Rainer was really assuming that his opponent would go for a Stargate. As I said, I, I didn't catch it like he just forgot, like missed the speed, but I, I think that is unlikely. But it hasn't happened. It has happened. Dark actually did it in the uh, Atlanta finals, if I remember correctly. So it, it absolutely happens, but I don't know. I it, He could have been faked out. I mean, he, he eventually figured things out because he did stop at 41 drones. He did try and get a Roach Warren almost appropriately timed once again, almost being the key word. But skipping that speed, maybe he had a plan going into this best of seven that obviously had to change according to what Hero was actually doing. He did really just bet on Hero not opening up at the Twilight Council. He only threw that build out once, I believe, in their best of five. I don't know. Rainer has gone for those er that earlier hatch, earlier pool. Later gas. Okay, so we're gonna get an 18. And we are looking more to Hero, whether or not he is gonna go for the Twilight Council again, because that it seems to be a weakness. Now, last game is very obvious why it would go poorly. Very obvious. But the other game they played a couple days ago, before this best of seven was played, their first match against each other, it also went poorly for Raynor, even though Raynor again seemed to have the idea it was on the way. He stopped at 41 drones. He was trying to get a Roach Warren in the time. He actually had a decent amount of speedlings to start the defense, but then didn't quite get this around, and that really did, I think, escalate things. So... I don't think you ever look at Rainer and say, well, this guy has this super big weakness that I can just hit over and over and over again. Because Rainer's too good for that. He doesn't come into this with a, you know, 30% win rate in some matchup and is just so bad at it. Or super weak to cheese or something like that. No, but some days you're off. Some strategies are more well hidden than others and it could be something that you want to try and exploit until it stops working. But Hero's not going to do it back to back. He did go for a Stalker first, actually. Which is a little interesting. But then actually into that Stargate, then Warp Gate. Something the Overlord was not quite able to see. Let's actually see the 7X core. But Stalker first is, uh, I mean, I feel like a pretty good sign that it is going to be... Well... No, actually. Nah, it could still be either one, absolutely. It could absolutely have gone into a Twilight Council. Yeah, he got the Stalker third in the last game and emphasized some adept production, but I think what it does say is that Hero is not too concerned about Rainer cheesing him. Hero didn't probe scout or try to probe block, and his adept would have been a little late to see if there was a speedling all-in on the way. And the Stalker is obviously very courageous, moving out in the map to what could be a faster speed build. It's not, and he's seen the lings at this point that don't have speed. But, okay. Fortunately, that doesn't provide high ground vision. <laughs> the mountain climbing Stalker still couldn't see the high ground without the Oracle's help. Uh, so, yeah. It's okay, it looks weird, but it wasn't broken, guys. The Overlord is dying because of the Oracle. Third Nexus is absolutely going down. This has all been scouted by this very nicely placed Ling. And so the handshake has been shook. <laughs> there has been a handshake at this point. Like, okay, you're probably going to go to Triple Oracle. And then, okay, well, you're probably going to go into you know, speed finishes. Probably into maybe melee upgrades, maybe roaches. And that is what the Oracle now wants to go ahead and determine. Handshake has been shooketh. Thanks, guys. Yeah, that's what you're primarily scouting at this point. I think, like, the first Oracle run by is that, you know, any signs of technology. Can't quite get into the natural to see if there was, for instance, a low drone count, and I suppose there are still some Ling only? Well, Ling pressure. Yeah, there, there's that that could be happening right now. There could have been Lings bulked up or being made as well, trying to get a cancel on a third. So that's another thing I'll, you know, Oracles would want to scout for. But the Oracles did kind of glimpse into the natural. They saw an evolution chamber fairly quickly. Might be going ahead and saying, okay, it is plus one melee. 
And Bayonetta is coming down now, too. Serena's going to emphasize this and then possibly add Roachmorn with Ravagers later on. Hero, in the meantime, has gotten up to Triple Oracle and a decent number of Adepts. Not with Resident Glaives, but enough certainly to scare a Zerg who has tried to drone more than they've tried to build Lings. Oh, no, that drone was there to seemingly block and then just decided it's not my job. F you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and that drone is still just going to be like, oh, I'm just going to chill here. It's a good time. I mean, there are some lings, so the adepts don't want to let themselves be surrounded, because then it might be an effective number of lings. But as long as they aren't surrounded, I mean, these adepts will be a bother for sure. Queens on top of them, lings pull away as the drones were pulled away too. Oracle's coming in to actually chase down those drones, as they are vulnerable. Something's going to kill them. Adepts or oracles. Triple stasis trap seems a little over eager. Those are all just canceled there, but the drones did eventually get back to mining in barely proximity to the Adepts, and a couple more did just go down. But that, I mean, that could have been worse. That could have been better, you know? Like, I feel like those Oracles, if they had actually chosen to... Uh, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they couldn't have helped out, but it's, the Stasis Traps are completely useless. We all can agree on that. Oh my god, Fleet Beacon's on the way. We can all agree on the stasis traps being useless. I can see the idea, because so often they will not be uh, targeted, they won't be concerned. The lings will be chasing the adepts, queens will be chasing the adepts. But, yeah, as far as a distraction for the drones to get a couple more drone kills, also I don't think it was particularly good. Overall, I actually say that this is a loss for Hero, who took more gas damage. But, uh, that, yeah. That bother on the economy also has a implications more than just the straight up resource trade. I don't know. But the follow up is so much more interesting. So let's talk about that. Triple Oracle still in play. They're going to be some of the only units on the field. If Rainer was going for some kind of earlier attack, you know, no fourth base, maybe literally like 60 drones, and was just pumping out Ling Bane, Ling Ravager. I mean, Hero might have been in some trouble. Might have. Because he doesn't have a lot of units, but then obviously any of those units I just listed don't attack air. So, it'd be a question of how much damage can they do before they die. And that's not what's happening. And a little Warp Prism action is even maybe keeping up appearances, as well as keeping up scouting, as the Oracle say at home. And keeping up appearances as far as it being a gateway-based game. We even have walls of gateways coming down, which would further keep up appearances. And the fact that it's kind of a different way of SimCitying doesn't necessarily nod to mass air. This could absolutely be something experimented with uh, for a ground-based Protoss. But at the end of the day, all the like, well, could be, could be that, could be this, could be figuring out this much. I mean, really, Rainer does not know. Rainer does not know that it is carriers. There's very little to read into here. Charge is even done. So you might be thinking, oh, he's building up the High Templars behind this. He's not. And Rainer doesn't know. I'm doubly sure of that because the Spire was not on the way. Now is on the way, but he also does tend to grab this with his Hive. Whether or not he actually goes into Broodlord is a different question. Depends on the scenario. But obviously in this case, it's going to be much more for the Corruptors. Oracles might even get a cancel. These queens are going to be slow. Hey, these oracles get a cancel. Ha! That sucks. <laughs> yep, that's a canceled hatchery right there. Drone died as well. Oh, well. Rain is going to grab the fourth base off to the right side and probably just double expand anyway. But the real issue is that Rainer still has no idea what's happening. His overseer is going to get in here. And... Then, then, then what? Then he can bust out how many Corruptors? Not that many. Oh my god, he's building a... He's building a Ultralisk Cavern. Anything that doesn't shoot up? Ultras can be a great addition in, in very late game ZVP scenarios. As they can try and kill the High Templars on the ground. So it's... It's eventually part of the ingredient. But it's like the last ingredient that goes in. <laughs> Not the first one. And not usually worth all of the resources that's put in if you're worried about being killed by a bunch of carriers. Already up to four. They are getting their upgrade finally. That was not the quickest. Protected by a High Templar's Wist Storm as well as a mothership that's about to pop out. Rainer does seem to think that uh, the Queens will do okay for now. He's not eagerly getting into Corruptors as a panic move. 
which I actually really have to applaud because I certainly would have been panicking. He's even going to invest into Ultras first. Yeah, 100% solid carries. This is not him forgetting what Interceptors look like. But he is going to go ahead and depend on Spores and Queens to cover him if it turns into a bit of a base trade. And then the Ling Ultra seems to be attempting to try and run around. Jump on top of bases, jump on top of production, static defense, and the carriers aren't particularly fast. Now, they are going to have two recalls when the Mothership pops, Mothership and Nexus, so they can be a little more mobile, but uh, nothing compares to Ling Ultra, pretty much. And during this time, we also can have Reina continue to build a bigger bank and have a more successful full-on transition over to Corruptors, which will inevitably be the anti-air. He's not going to try and play the Hydralisk and infest your game here. Absolutely not. So eventually he'll bust out, hell, even upwards of 20 Corruptors if things really all go according to plan. He never feels threatened. He actually gets some damage done. And then Hero is the one who's actually throwing up his hands and saying, this, this sucks. Let's go across the map. And then boom, that's where all the Spellcasters are. That's where all the Corruptors are. And Rainer's totally ready to go. It's going to be 11 to start off with. And that is a pretty decent number. Plus one air also. Very close to finishing for Rainer. He is, uh, he is grabbing a second Spire at this point. There's obviously a good move, whereas Hero has not grabbed the second Simon X core. He's not started upgrading it at the very least. He is upgrading plus two air as well as plus two shields. And we do seem to be heading into potential super long game ZVP. Hero set the tone. He got to the Sky Toss first, but has not used it for any type of quick game. We have seen a couple of builds from Hero. SOS was also using them in the Katowice qualifiers, actually, where it was a surprise first two, then four carriers on top of Queens. And that those actually could end the games. But that was not apparently what Hero was banking on. He really did just want to go ahead and leap forward, leap over a lot of the PVZ that is based on the ground and just go right into the Sky Toss with High Templars on the ground, Immortals as well, because he did see the Ultras and a couple of Archons for the bulk. Lings do have Adrenal Glands. They're about to have plus three. Any run by will be quite terrifying, which is why some Archons are being added on. And Rainer again behind all of that uh, attempted aggression. It's not really done very much so far. Attempted run buys is going to go ahead and grab quite a few drones, possibly even up to 90 at some point. Going to stay at 85 for now. And with absolutely zero trading going on, both of them are starting to bank. There just really isn't anything happening. Oracle's almost got Fungal, but not quite. One of them does go down. Lings and Ultra still trying to do their run buys. Miscellaneous Protoss units gonna go ahead and suicide themselves. They are not necessary. And uh, as we do head into potential late, late, late game, it will eventually become a war of attrition. One of which Rainer will want to uh, win by taking the rest of the bases and mining from them ASAP. The fact that he already has the gold is, is quite a good sign. But Hero is actually moving out, not too shy to be aggressive. We got a handful of Broodlords being created, but they are not ready to go. I think Rainer's army in general isn't quite ready to go. Another Air, Air, Air Carapace upgrade is going to finish up too. Where are the Corruptors? Here they are now. We do have... A Shroud coming down on the Queen to try and help out. Also, Parasitic Bomb. A couple of them on the Sky Toss, but where the heck is Rainer's standing army? Apparently, he's maxed out again or close to it, but where in the world is it? So many Archons left over. So many carriers without shields, but still alive left over. And a decent amount of Interceptors. Enough to make it work. The Broodlords are not properly protected, so they aren't really getting a chance to kill the ground units. The run by did manage to kill Heroes 5th, but not much more than that. And it does seem like Rainer simply was not prepared at that time to deal with the massive late-game Protoss army. Being able to meet them a bit more halfway, with obviously the Broodlords ready, and the Corruptors even taking pot shots before the actual engagement happens. Abducts coming through. Fungals and Parasitic Bombs starting the fight, not being in the middle of the fight. Those are all things that would have gone a lot better for the Zerg player. And instead, everything was just a little bit late. Hero not going to overstay his welcome, though, realizing there's a high chance that Raynor can remax. Again, not much had happened in this game up until that point. So both of them are banking and presumably the Zerg a little bit more, and that was the case. So Raynor not going to die. He's going to have a second chance at winning this game. And then thanks uh, especially to the fifth base being killed, I think he... Maybe he has that chance, but that's being rebuilt. Hero's army is still very strong. 
It's got really good upgrades as well, plus three attack on those carriers, and quite a few of them too. Feedbacks and Storm trying to come down, but the Militia will die. Spores helping out this time, and the Ultras as well starting to chop on those Archons. Corruptor's obviously still a little shy about running in here, as long as all of those High Templars are ready to go with a Storm. More Ultras coming through, a little bit choked in, however. Here come the Corruptors, trying to go for a little bit of a split to mitigate that Storm damage, trying to actually kill these freaking carriers. Will it be enough? So many Corruptors have gone down, and there's still a decent amount of carriers. The Intercept is left over. That is going to be it. It's going to be a wash on the ground by the looks of things, but a victory in the air for the Protoss as he also has that Warpers and the continue reinforcing. Rainer's gonna try with a handful of Corruptors and Ultras. Will it be enough? They're gonna be once again coming down a choke. They're gonna be going on top of Archons and Stalkers that now have Blink. Further upgrades finished during that fight as well. And it just seems that Hero has done a little bit too well in this game. Rainer is hanging on, barely keeping his head above water, losing very critical bases as well, so he is no longer banking. And we have another warp in of High Templars. Four or five more Archons are about to join, but even before they're ready to go, the Protoss army might still win this particular battle with the carriers free firing on the Ultras. They don't kill them that fast, but they do eventually kill them. And the Archons all finishing up, juggling as well. This is once again going to be a bit of a wash on the ground, but victory in the sky. There's still nothing killing these carriers. The Corruptor is actually just popping out now, just arriving now. I have tried. Uh, maybe to, to hold on a little bit. And try and take a better fight once out of the ground was depleted, which is a really smart move there as well. I think they were, they were combining together, they were reinforcing from all different pathways, but then also waiting might have been the better call. Uh, again, like, seriously, may have. If they had attacked with the Ultra army, then perhaps the Ultras would have demolished that fight even better because the Interceptors would have had to pick and choose uh, between Corruptors and Ultras, so... Eh, hard to say. But now they are accompanied by a Viper. It's going to try and abduct at least one carrier. It does, but it also gives its life for it. And uh, we now have the problem being the ground army at this point. Rainer was only able to partially max out that one time with the Corruptors and Ultras. The Ultras threw themselves away in a trade, but Hero had a better maxing out on the ground situation. And then the Harriers, I guess, are willing to give their lives for ire here. If they do go down to the Corruptors, that means the Corruptors are now useless units in the sky. You can see that Hero is still very careful about actually going for it. Very much respecting the Zerg army. And Hero himself actually doesn't have, like, best quality Protoss with so many charge lots. But honestly, the charges are totally fine here. There's no Banelings. There's nothing that shoots uh, range, so a Fungal could really take advantage. Now there will be. <laughs> Broodlords are on the way, so now that it, that would be an issue. If a Fungal went down on the charge on Archons, the Broodlords will eventually take him down scot-free. We're not quite there yet. Rainer is really trying to get that Remax, but Hero just got there faster. The Broodlords would be pretty freaking good against this army once the, the carriers are gone. Actually, the carriers realizing Broodlords are on the way. Try and go after them. Stalkers as well. Blinking aggressively forward. Do not kill the Broodlords. And the Ultras are just barely taking down the Ark on a mortal army to the north side. Wait a second. Rainer. He's going to hold. He is going to hold. And Hero is going to be forced to fully evacuate at this point. Only partially evacuating in the previous engagements. Corruptor's not going to try and go for a run by. Going to find a warp prism. That's also pretty good, but might also die to the Archon. Hello, the Archon. So low, though. The Ling's on top of it. Going to grab it. Corruptor's peeing on a building. Hero needs that base. He needs the Remax. He needs more Stalkers. As the Stalkers try and blink away from the Cracklings, the rest of the Zerg army will, in fact, take down this Nexus. And that is a very important Nexus. Hero does not have much more mining to do. Now, neither does Raynor who was back down to his original four bases as well, and this base is so close to death too. But he is actually getting a sneaky gold base back up and running. His Corruptors continue to look for more buildings to kill, and Raynor has taken the supply lead with a handful of Broodlords too. Now, three Broodlords will not cover each other. If they get blinked upon by the Stalkers, they probably die. But if they're covered by pretty much any number of Cracklings, or maybe a Fungal, or a Blinding Cloud, then they will work wonders against what is now, once again, we're kind of like, for the first time, I guess, in a weird way, a fully ground Protoss army. Again, he skipped the ground to get to the air, 
and it is now actually on the ground. So, ah, that's a um, interesting turn of events, and it looked like it was going to work out for Hero, but unfortunately, it was not able to take on the ground army as efficiently as he would like. These ultras actually being completely maxed out on upgrades at 3-3. Three, three. Well, here only ever had plus one attack. Certainly affected that. And then the reverse situation was happening in the skies. I mean, Rainer didn't have very good upgrades in the skies, but Hero did. But then Hero figured it was time to move on from that. Oh, the fungal catches the stalkers. The ultras chomp, chomp, chomping away. This is Hero's last stand. He is down 70 supply, needing this base to get up and running, and that is not looking like it's going to happen. A wonderful position for such few Broodlords. Covered by those fungals, covered by the ultras, and also kind of a tricky ramp to go up to. The Broodlords will eventually die, but I think they've done their job. The ultras are going to gratefully accept this battle. No amount of storms will change the outcome at this point. And Raynor, he has held on, and in this game, he has brought it back to his victory. Hero was so freaking close in winning. I really thought he did it. I really thought Rainer was in a ton of trouble when he was forced to be pushed all the way to his natural. That's actually how far the Protoss army got originally. Rainer pulls through, and that is now a tied up best of seven. Game number three is going to be on Hecate. In the, the top right, it is DKZ's hero. In the bottom left, it is Basilisk's Rainer. Again, Rainer looked to be in so much trouble. He was just shy of really being ready for a, a sky battle. Yet had enough of a bank to remax. And Hero gave that a lot of respect. Was it too much? There might be some argument there. Because when Hero pushed into the natural, Rainer was still almost maxed out. And I was questioning, literally. The commentary was, where the heck is it? <laughs> And generally, when you do that, it's because they're all coming in from the five or six bases that are around the map, right? Two corruptors to the left, five corruptors to the right, 20 lings on the on the south side. Um, which means that Raider did still have a good army supply, but if it is actually reinforcing from all different directions, two things could happen. One, the timing is absolutely freaking perfect, and the Protoss army actually gets surrounded with the full force of the Zerg reinforcements. Bad news for the Protoss. Or two, the Protoss army kills 20% of the army, 20% of the army, 20% of the army, 20% of the army. And maybe that could have happened. I would have had to have gone back into the replay and seen exactly how the circumstance would have, would have played out. But Hero did give respect to the idea of the Remax, so he actually started to leave. And that might have been the right call. I'd have to look again. But that did then lead to a little bit more of the air versus ground versus air versus ground. Which, yeah, Hero seemed to still be getting the upper hand on. We've certainly seen games like that. They're still kind of odd and they're still kind of funny when the air is first and the ground is second. But we've seen it. We've seen the Protoss even kind of become more of the Zerg because their reinforcements are faster because they're reinforcing with the Warp Prism and 13 Gateways. But yeah, that plus one attack being the only attack upgrade for Hero probably really screwed him up. The Zealots weren't very impressive even versus the Cracklings. They certainly weren't doing much to the Ultras before getting chomped down. The Stalkers could try and focus fire and blink micro all they want, but they probably took a lot of extra shots to actually kill any of those Ultras. So he kept on having washes on the ground, partial victories in the sky, but then not actually able to use it. I would not be surprised if Hero was also a little confused for a second or two. Being like, oh, I really thought that was the play, you know? Not necessarily out of desperation, but actually out of belief that going into ground was the right play, and then being like, Hey, <laughs> what the hell? But uh, either way, I do think Hero let that game slip a little bit as well. Not nearly comparable to the first game, which he had an astounding lead. But now he's going to go back to the first game's build order, the Twilight Council. And I just said, you know, it's not that I think Raynor would always die to an Adept attack. I don't think any of our pro gamers actually have that big of a weakness that it's just comical. You know, like, oh boy. Maybe back in 2010, some pro gamer actually would die constantly to a 3 Rex bunker. But that's because bunker rushes were broken back then. Adepts aren't broken. But it, it seems effective. 
And whatever it does, whether it catches Rainer with a particularly bad build opener, or it catches him just a little out of position, and this was the map, I believe, that he used it in their best of five. The Adepts ended up being here, not surrounded. Uh, whatever you do, like whatever you slice it, Hero's won with the build. So keep on doing it until it doesn't work, I would say. But that's maybe why I'm not a coach, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my word for it, that's for sure. Watch what Hero does and see if it actually works. 100% that's happening. Last time in their best of five, Raynor did figure this out, but his Rotorn was maybe a little bit late, and, and that Ling surround is just a little bit late as well. Maybe it could have preempted the shade and gotten in position for us around. So let's see if those things are fixed. We got the first Warp Prism attack on the way. Oh, the follow-up this time. A little bit of a change-up for Hero. He is going to follow up with the Dark Shrine. Now, I actually didn't pay attention to the uh, first game. I said Raynor did get a Cautionary Sport Brawler, a single one. Because the DT follow-up can happen, obviously. But I didn't catch if he did it in the first game of this series. And he's so far not doing it in this game of this series. So that's a little concerning. Very easy to let that slip your mind, I think. But so far, so good on the adept defense. No adepts getting in, trading out, uh, actually better than trading, but killing all of the lings. Which means the adepts are now just growing in size. It eventually might split, but the possibility of them tackling an army has gone down drastically now that they have not taken a fight against the lings already and the roaches are out. But the Dark Shrine, the Dark Shrine, Anyway, Spork Brawler is on the way in the main base, but not the natural and not the third. Oh, it's already done in the natural. I'm just blind. The adepts are going to see that. Trying to kill as many drones as possible, but actually so far only getting lings. And now into the main base. Still have that one-shot potential, that's for sure. Warp Prism, did he die? Did it die? Died. Rainer has killed the Warp Prism every single time this build has happened. And yet this might be the finally the game, in which it actually means he wins it. Adept's going to be recalled in the main, but hardly even worth it, really. Oh. Okay, somehow all three survived, my bad. But still, Spore in the main, Spore at the natural, no Spore at the third. And Hero, no longer with the Warp Prism, would actually have to be moving his Dark Templars across town, far less effective than what I was imagining. And at this point, the lair is about 80% done. And, and a Spore is on the way to third, actually. Rainer possibly even thinking at this point, not that he must have been doing this this entire time, but, oh, well, he's not one with the Adepts. Let's make sure he doesn't follow up with a desperate Dark Shrine. Either way, absolutely correct to be having these Spore Crawlers. The DTs now make their way to the third at a pretty poor timing. I have to acknowledge, oh, that Archons are better, but even loses one. So he has to replace it, actually get two Archons. Oh, jeez. And so much, very much playing with fire here. With the second War Prism, the follow-up is once again more interesting as Hero is said to go into follow-up Double Phoenix. This has been done before. I haven't seen so much the Triple Forge, but I have definitely seen this build into the Double Phoenix. And you know, I definitely recall Rainer falling to it once or twice. It's a really stupid feeling. Not that the Zerg player is stupid. It's just a really stupid feeling when you die to this. Because what happens is that you barely don't have enough. Like Queens, for instance. Then the, the Phoenix pick you up and you go, well, that was kind of stupid. Let me make like get enough Hydras. And then there's barely enough Hydras. And you say, well, that's kind of stupid. And then you try and get more Hydras. And then by that point, you've not droned as much as you wanted. And charge lots are involved. And suddenly you get overwhelmed. So if you do die to this, it just feels really bad. But I really don't think it's going to happen. Rainer literally just scouted it. So he should not be at all surprised. His Queens uh, still higher in number than the Phoenix. So not an issue. We actually have Void Rays following this up. Which are going to help more so if the Roaches decide to come across the map and kill him. That is understandable, but Void Rays as an entire game plan, not the best nowadays. In 2024 PvZ, Void Rays for the professionals really ain't no thing. And this would be where going into Hydras is also just way better. The chances of Hero having anything that helps against the Hydras specifically, like Storm or even Charge, is kind of low. Let's say he got Charge, well then the Roaches buffering on a classic Roach-Hydra composition would help a lot. And then the Void Arrays don't do any extra damage versus Hydras, obviously. So, 
You know, if it's a if it's corruptors, because you just default to it for some reason. Shield battery, overcharge, soccer weapons, archons, helping, void ray prismatic alignment. Always you can easily throw away a large corruptor force. But there's there's no way the remainder I think was ever even thinking about that. Hydras will do the trick. And nowadays you even have the additional option. In case the Roach Hydra isn't quite doing it for whatever reason, there's the additional option that's not hive tech, but infestors. So you can actually kind of quickly add on that microbial shroud to actually still help. If you need it, and I don't think you will. <laughs> I think Rainers won this game. The best adept defense by far. Took three games to get it, but in the third game, squashed the adept attack. Almost didn't even have to care about the Dark Shrine. And now he's going to go for the killing maneuver. And those Void Rays only literally with a single shield battery to help out. Probably ain't going to cut it. You know? It's not, I mean, the Adepts, did they, were, did they do something? Oh, the Adepts went for a, a counter attack. Okay. Attempted pseudo base trade. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. But not really. Hero is going to show... Uh, none, he can't say stubborn, but he, he's going to show that he doesn't tap out of games too quickly. There you go. There you go. DT's came in. Going to force Reiner back for a little bit. Nexus, however, died. Void Rays still don't really help overall, I would argue. And the Adepts hardly even did anything. Maybe they killed Queens or some reinforcing Hydras, but only three drones went down. Hero is... He's, he's dead. He's dead, dead, dead. But I've said this before. And Hero has made one or two comebacks happen, I guess. But, I mean, he's, I've said it before. I'll have to say it again. Because Hero doesn't tap out of game sometimes particularly quickly. And that's just one of them. I really do not believe in any type of comeback. I know I called the first game over for Rainer, and that really changed around. That's cool and all. Or, or almost changed around, I should say. He did still lose. This is not even comparable to that. Hero, down to one base, decides... I'm probably not going to win the game. Taps out, and Rainer now takes the lead. Game number four in this best of seven will be on Alcyone. Top right down again now. He is Hero. And the bottom left, we do have Rainer. Who was... Certainly full stop the Adept thing. Hero could still throw it out, and he could also throw out different versions of it. There's a 3 gate, there's a 5 gate. I think there's a 6 gate. There's different gates. <laughs> there's a cheeky uh, DT build you can do that can look like an Adept if you're just going off the work gate at the front. You know, that was one of the oldest Protoss builds for Legacy of the Void, or the most common one for a while. You could throw that back in, then it turns into the Archon drop, you know? But uh, a lot of these builds that I, I just went over, any amount of gateways with the Adepts and the Dark Shrine build that goes into the Archon drop, they're kind of old for a reason. They're not done so much for a reason. Well, it does seem to be that Zerg players are not nearly so caught off guard. So even if they had to make sacrifices to ensure their defense is up and running, which is always one of the issues of the Adept attack, do I drone correctly? Do I build army correctly? They have gotten a lot better at doing that. So as long as they're not completely shocked and, and really whiff, <laughs> like arguably Raynor did earlier in this series, and they're usually pretty good against it. It's not the most dependable anymore. So Hero probably going to go back to uh, yield standard Stargate. I mean, he has played normal games versus Raynor, and they did go fine. By normal, I mean Stargate, Triple Oracle into Blink, maybe a proxy gate. Uh, that was a promising game, even though they ended up losing. Maybe just no proxy, just quick fourth in the Hero style that he was displaying last year. I mean, those still look very good against Raynor. Not necessarily having to think up the world's weirdest tricks for Protoss to win here. But clearly, Hero wants to throw in at least a couple in the series. Nothing so weird as that Triple Forge, though, which is really quite disappointing. It's like, I get the idea. I really... I guess I think I get the idea. But it was overall very disappointing. 
Rainer's Overlord in position to scout the warp gate timing, sees it as a stargate timing. Hero's Probe did not end up blocking out that hatchery, by the way, despite being a very fast scout. And we got ourselves a normalish looking game. Rainer is ahead by one game. Alcyone. I feel like we've seen a decent amount of Zergolings on this map. I am thinking, could Rainer try and quickly, swiftly get a game number three by doing something cheesy? Especially because Hero has shown this pylon wall off more than once. At this point, it is obviously intentional. All right, like the first time we saw it, it was intentional because there's no way that Hero plays on these maps for going on four months now and is like, gosh, I messed up my build again. <laughs> I messed up my wall off again. There's just no freaking way. So for some reason, he's going for this pylon. And the reason that I could guess, besides some maps like this one, I guess you can see it means that you don't have to build a third structure, another gateway or your stargate on the front. So there's that, that's one thing. The second thing might actually be a bit of a bait. Uh, similar to when, uh, I guess, some PvPs go for a non-wall off at the front. It kind of baits your opponent into maybe trying a Ling All In, and then you're actually very on top of your scouting. So you do still wall appropriately and get enough units, totally fine. You go for a Stargate, so the Oracles eventually pop out, and then they've kind of wasted their efforts going for a Ling All In, because that was just such a juicy looking prize that they really don't have recovery after that. The laying all in is, is very much an all in. So I could see that. I could see it, but it does seem to be one of the few Protosses doing it. Anytime you see a pro gamer being the only one, or maybe one of two, you do have the question, are they setting a new trend or are they experimenting and things are about to go very, very wrong very fast? <laughs> Which one is it? Uh, moving on, moving on. We do have an Oracle opening, but actually into Void Ray. So a big, big change up. This Void Ray obviously kills Overlords, but then also is a little more helpful for the defense compared to a Phoenix, which would have been a little cheaper at the very least. And we have a Twilight Council, and then double Forge. So not triple, which I, I think I like better. I think I'm on board with this one a little bit more. But double forge, I imagine we're gonna see some of that mass gateway blink and then charge. Second Oracle's still coming out too, actually. Yeah, there's that one one, and uh, again, assuming it is blink first, it is indeed. So I'm gonna have a stronger gateway based army. We are going more into what Hero was bringing into the PVZ fold at the beginning of last year. Was the beginning of last year or was it the year before that? Maybe it was the point. I don't remember now. But the point is for a long time. And uh, he brought it in. People were like, oh, wow, he comes back from the military, revolutionizes the matchup. That's awesome. It was awesome, but it didn't necessarily stick. It had subpar glue to the wall, I suppose. One factor is that Hero has always been the best with it in this matchup, in this meta, on these maps, so on and so forth. Another thing is that I think people did start to really figure out how to deal with it. At a certain point, I felt like I was talking to Zergs, and they were actually saying it was no problem. I think Rainer was actually one of those confident guys. But to bring it back in every now and again, I think is always a beautiful thing to do. It's my favorite style of watch, and to add on that surprising second upgrade can throw off the balance of the attack a little bit more. Rainer size things up, doesn't click on the upgrades, which he will, but just throwing out a scenario. Doesn't click on the upgrades, thinks I have plus one melee, let's go for it. And then actually, it's been nullified by a surprising plus one armor. But he should, he will click on the upgrades, he'll know. <laughs> it is plus one melee. Just talk about the Zerg for a hot second. Banling is on the way, Roach, Warren, already done. Both of them perfecting their economies more so. Third base saturated for hero, might mine out these minerals, even momentarily. As he is heading towards a robotics bay, I'm thinking about that Colossus push, and so... Fourth base will be wanted. And he will not be moving out until the fourth base is building. Or even done. So it's not like he's going to have to worry about the run buys that are now available since the minerals are gone. I think an Oracle just died, by the way. Oracle died for the greater good. Good scout of the main. Kind of, not really. Just kidding. It actually died for nothing. <laughs> womp womp. All it saw was that a lair was still here, which... 
A seven minute hive isn't impossible. And we have seen it. But that's that's still not all the information you would want. The invitation bit is now on the way. Rainer doesn't know about the fourth base, but might be picking up on what Hero is putting down. Doesn't know about the main base either. Any amount of Overseer is going to try and get a scout. There you are. This would be the time to do so. Going to see the fourth base. Going to see the robotics bay. Going to see the forge. And honestly, with the tempo that has been set in this game, which is a very easygoing one, <laughs> nothing's happened. I'll be figuring he's been waiting for that Colossus push. Now, the Colossus push has a fairly large weakness. Besides being surrounded, as any StarCraft army is weak to being surrounded. Also Vipers. Vipers come in, abduct those Colossus. That's a big part of your push, gone. So oftentimes we'll try and see this push maybe before those Vipers are ready. We do eventually see maybe the High Templars get involved, especially if it's not the all-in version. As we're just going into more of a macro game. But then do they actually get the feedbacks? That's the question. Stalkers go for a quick cancel on the gold, get the queens, but then get completely surrounded by these lings with plus one melee. That's all they got, but they got a very efficient surround prior to the Colossus helping out. So now that Colossus is also a little bit vulnerable, Rainer just jumping on every single opportunity possible. Will not get the Colossus, but he just got almost all the Stalkers. He got 13 Stalkers out of 16. That was a way over dedication from Hero. That, that is too much. That was just too much. Like, his economy is fine. He'll be able to replace an army eventually, but that is clearly too many resources to loss. To, to lose. To, because English. I mean, that's, uh, that was pretty freaking bad. And now, if Hero was hoping that this would be a little stalker aggression into a little bit of Colossus pressure, killing up some of the creep tumors, threatening the Zerg, into an actual push, I mean, that plan is gone at this point. You do not have any sort of momentum on your side. You really don't have a stake on the map. They tried to plant a flag and then a hurricane blew through. So you just have to play a macro game. But a macro game, it does feel like it's increasingly going much, much, much better for Raynor. Who is going to get this gold base up? Who is going to get the drones on it? Who is going to have all the upgrades and all the hive technology and all the remaxes? And Hero is going to have to play the respectable defending Protoss until they finally have a decent army. If they try and jump towards Stargate right now, for instance, to try and get to that later, that, that after stage, they're going to probably just die to a low supply. So, kind of prepping for a potential transition as time goes on with a plus one air weapons on the way. But definitely not trying to go to it right now. Uh, Zealots might get a cancel on this sixth base, which would be something. Not gonna focus fire, maybe later. Come back later. Ling Baneling setting up to the top side as the main chunk of Rainer's army looks to hit the gold of Hero. Hero has a supply at 160. That's not too bad. Some zealots that aren't necessarily all that helpful, and those vipers look very scary indeed. The High Templars are trailing a little bit behind, but oh no, there is no wall whatsoever over there. Overcharge is going to be basically wasted. Only kept that cannon alive for a little bit longer, and Banelings really pulled the on into that probe line. 15 go down. Lings to the main base as well. Are they Cracklings? Yes, indeed they are. They've got their Junk Lands. They're also getting that scout on that possible Fleet Beacon transition, and Rainer just seems to be kicking butt everywhere that we look. He actually has not been able to overwhelm the Protoss army, and all the stack defense is now down on the gold. So that might be a good sign for hero fans out there. But there we go. One yoink comes through. Another one was looking for, but the High Templar is appropriately posturing themselves. And things will calm down for now. With how many lings actually got through into the natural, I'd actually say the probe damage is not that bad. That could have been a lot worse. It could have been the probe damage, plus the forges, plus pylons, plus burrow, plus whatever. You know, like that could have been a lot longer to deal with. And Hero actually might have even gotten a somewhat army trade at that point, cleaning up as many lings as he did. But those lings died and were replaced with, oh, well, Banelings and Ultras. Vipers also rejuiced, and Hero might regret moving out a little bit here. He's going to be surrounded. Oh, God, the blinding clouds coming down on the choke as well. And there just doesn't seem to be anything going well for Hero. This move out, another disaster, as he also gets lings into his third base and back into his main. Oh, that's an overseer, just kidding. But still, Hero... He has lost way too much, yet again. Alcyone has not gone well for him whatsoever. And it does look like he will be falling onto his last life shortly. It's 
overseer still chilling. I guess it's just confirming there's no carriers on the way. Lots of injured Zerg units going to make a successful retreat. Join up with the reinforcements. Rainer is going up to six bases, 79 drones. This hero does still have a strong economy. So not all hope is lost, but a lot of it is. Does not look very good for Protoss right now. Rainer's taken over almost half the map in creep spread. That's also pretty intimidating. Something that Protoss players sometimes can be okay with. If they defend very successfully and get to counter punch in, they will walk right over that creep spread while the Zerg desperately tries to remake their army. It's only if Rainer really fails on the attack though, which I'm not sure is gonna happen. Hero coming in to defend his gold base. Unfortunately, those probes are going to be chomped on by the Ultras. Yummy little dinner right there. Archons are adding way longer than they should because the Overcharge actually was not taken out by any of the Zerg units. But just look at the supply. Even as Raynor loses the Ultras here to the SAG defense and a couple of reinforcing Immortals, he still holds on to an 80 supply lead. Going to take down this gold base Nexus as well. Flood in with Lings and six more Ultras. And Hero's army just simply does not stand up to that. Rainer almost tripling the army supply of his opponents. Ling run by once again threatening the natural. And there it goes. Zealots just moved out of position. And this is it. This is game over, man. Game over. Hero's last second micro will not be saving him. Even a blinding cloud brutally on a choke. Actually, an ultra was the only thing fighting, so it wasn't that brutal. But still. But still. Hero once again showing how often he does not tap out of He's a trooper. Sometimes a super trooper. Sometimes it's a little, a little hard to cast, actually, because you've already done all of your, all of your hype. You've already done all of the reasons why he's dead, and uh, you are just waiting for him to go ahead and jump into the grave here. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Rainer now leading the series three to one. In the top right of Solaris, this guy is now in his last life. He is Hero. In the bottom left, it is Rainer. Dismantling Hero in the last two games. Not letting him get started. I think that last game could have been set up, uh, was set up totally fine. And then that move out with the stalkers is just, oh, I mean, it's terrible. It ended up terribly. The reason he does it is with the presumed safety that is blink and recall, maybe a little bit of the map to fall back on too. You even have a reinforcing Colossus, which would help specifically against Ling's getting the better of you. But all of those things just did not work out for a hero. The timing was off, the positioning was off, Rainer was a little too clever. Because those stalkers were like, we'll click gold base, and then we'll flip over to the other side, and then the lings will have to go around, and then we'll be totally fine. Because the Colossus will be there, man. Well, it didn't happen at all. They were really left stranded against lings that were already preempting such a move. Because at the end of the day, if Rainer could really think things through clearly with all the time in the world, or in his case, just a simple five seconds, he would realize, well, I could just cancel the gold base and then prepare for his eventual blink to the left. And that seems to be what he did. So then that just took a, the wind out of his uh, hero sails. Any potential attack he was trying to hit, like I was talking about, would have been literally 50 supply less. At least 40, right? And that just isn't worth it. So I guess what I'm saying is, you could do it again. And you know, you don't lose, you lose those stalkers in that fashion. And then we can see how powerful the attack can look. But... We shall see. Rainer is, uh, again, now up two maps. And for him, I really think he would try and go ahead and end the game. Uh, early game cheeses like the Ling all isn't really worth doing, and no one really does proxy hatches, even Dark stopped doing them. And uh, Ling Bane, Ling Bust don't really happen super early anymore. But I, I would absolutely see Rainer going for a maxed out Roach attack, hoping that Hero is just a little too bad to defend. 
Is it, then it would maybe be very simple. It would be Hero doing a simple build and Rainer doing a Roach attack, and we've seen plenty of Protoss hold on against that. But try it when you're up so many games with momentum on your side. I mean, that seems like a Rainer thing to me. Rainer is certainly a confidence guy. Sometimes verges on overconfidence. And not, uh, not in the same way that Hero does. It feels like Rainer verges on overconfidence in kind of a macro sense. You know, like across many games or series or days. Where Hero is the micro overconfidence. And yes, I am absolutely talking about his way over aggressive blinks. <laughs> and then... And then he dies. <sighs> but yeah, they, they both sometimes show that. But to have some confidence trying to end the game here, four to one, would not mind that whatsoever. So far, we wouldn't know if that is his plan. Third hatch still hasn't been taken. The probe was successful in blocking this time. Just a little bit more annoying. And Hero is going into a second Oracle, not Void Ray. So we do have uh, the most basic build being done so far. That Void Ray was a little twist. You know, there's a little more obscurity as to what Hero was actually doing. Not that I think it affected Rainer very much. I think that Void Ray coming out like it did wasn't necessarily scaring Rainer into believing it might have been a faster Twilight Council, but perhaps more so was scaring him, maybe, into thinking that it was going to be another Sky Toss play. But I don't think Rainer is really concerning himself with that. Didn't seem like it, though. <clears throat> Just continued playing very well, very ground focused and got that links around I do want hero to get a couple of more games here gonna be honest with you oh well this is nice six drones go down Oracle harassment the best it's been in the entire series and that's also because you know, not every game has been an Oracle opener but I am happy to see it Rainer a little less so and now we got four adepts, four, not six, not eight, but four coming across the map as well. Just that little bit of extra pepper to hopefully get Rainer coughing up a lung. I think Rainer did see it, and he certainly has enough lings to deal with it, actually. A little pokey poke. It's more so about the adepts being covered by the oracles. Not much more you can hope for when this is in a complete blind side. And the annoyance that is having those links constantly follow the adepts around. Oh, a little vulnerable natural. That's Spore Crawler way over to the right side. It's going to be fixed. And two drones is not too bad. Oh, Lord of the main base sees exactly what is going down. And I believe with this setup, you can tell that it is blink. Third base. Also could be watched for what exactly is being built if it was uh, unknown, but I think he should know. And then the question is, is this as many gateways as Hero has? Does he have a couple hidden in the backside? Is he a couple hidden on the map? Which even though he's getting a warp prism would still be kind of a clever thing to do. And the answer is, yeah, that's pretty much all the gateways. It's only four. That's really not enough to threaten a true attack, but it can start to control the creep spread a little bit off to the sides. Raina's going to be very careful about chasing after the Blink Stalkers that are also well, should be protected by the Oracles. So there's not that many, but it's a little bit of aggression. Or it could just be the Adepts going into the main base. How about that? That's also pretty good. The Ling scouted the Warpers and movement, so should be a little more on guard about it being used not to reinforce a front attack, but rather to go for run-bys. The Queens are already also getting into position to stop that. Hero with the Depths here is not going to be killing Queens. But Creep Troopers? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. A little bit of presence out in the map as more gateways are actually being built, so I spoke a little too soon, and Rainer should not be taking that one Overlord Scout as the facts here. More gateways right on after that died, and Hero is absolutely going to be gunning for a Blink plus one dedicated attack. He does not have his gases. He won't have a fourth very quickly. And if he does, it won't be you know probed up very quickly. And I don't know if Rainer actually is aware of that. His last scout was in the main one. It was four gateways. He hasn't gotten another scout in the third base since that Ling died. The fourth is getting more and more questionable as seconds pass, but it's not questionable yet, as Rainer even just added on three more drones. It's going to be up at 68 as Hero actually pushes in with how many stalkers? 18. That's a very feisty number. 
continued production from four gateways added actually quite a bit over the last minute, and then the other four finishing as well means that Hero has plenty of reinforcements, and Rainer is simply not prepared. Forceful drones away from this third base to the fourth now, which thankfully is up and running. So he'll still be mining a decent bit, but he needs an army. And that is what's currently missing! Oh, another very aggressive blink forward. He didn't even know it was behind all of that army, but fortunately it wasn't that much. Rainer just did not have enough army to stop this attack. Another blink forward, Jesus, my goodness. You know, there's such a thing as reflexively microing. Microing when one soccer gets low. And Hero is like pooey on that. <laughs> if I'm not blinking on the army, I'm not Hero. And in this case, it was 100% the correct thing to do. Rainer needed more time and was not given it. So Hero, with the kind of cheeky three base attack there, does not fall out of this best of seven, but still is on his last life. In the top left of Oceanborn, he is DKZ's Hero. And in the bottom right, it is Basilisk's Rainer. He is looking to make it an all Basilisk, all Zerg grand finals as Serral is awaiting the victor of these two in a best of nine finals. But Hero is looking to stop him and be one of the only Protosses to make it to a finals this year. <laughs> Actually, I haven't really been catching all of the online tournaments, so I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure he'd be the one of the few. Very, very few. And that is cool as a hero fan and as a general Protoss fan. I mean, I like all the races, you know. I get, you know, I don't like playing Zerg, but watching it's something cool. But it would be nice to see Protoss in the finals and actually going at a uh, even pace with Serral. Rainer has had his doubts about DVZ. Seems to be fixing that. He actually was playing Protoss versus Zerg instead of playing that awful matchup. Now he's actually playing ZVZ again and winning quite a lit. Quite a bit. Quite a lot, whatever. Another fake cannon is fake. Um, then he was showing off his practice versus the six GM Terrans in Archon mode. And it is highly impressive when he plays against them. But he actually doesn't really seem to show off or talk about ZVP as much. And that's kind of because it's it's good. You know, the ZVZ thing was because it was actually looking really bad. So you would talk about it. And the ZVT thing was just so impressive to hear him practice like that. But the ZVP for Rainer isn't really the most discussed matchup for him. But it's because it's good, you know? It's it's not the most mechanically demanding, so we might not necessarily have the most action-packed back-and-forth series. But it's also not, you know, maybe more coin-flippy like CVC, so you can see where his frustration is coming from. But it's always been solid. But nothing touches Serral's EVP. Pretty, like, not for the last, like, five years. It's actually kind of insane. In general, Serral's win rates are all astounding. But his EVP almost makes it look like Protoss is broken. But things have changed a little bit, and this is impacting the series here, as well as the previous Hero Rainer series. And that is the patch. Did help Protoss that littlest bit. They seem to be appreciating it, and Zerg seem to be frowning about it. Both these guys underdogs, should they go into the finals to face Serral, but... Both having cool stories about it. It just would be nice to finally throw Protoss a bone. Hero's going for a Stargate opener once again. I really love Hero for so many reasons. And even as I, I laugh or as I cry when he does silly things or bad things or whatever... What I love most about him is his Blink Stalker usage. So I'm really inherently biased when it comes to what I want to see. But when Hero does those tricky gateway attacks, the Forgeless Blink, the Proxy Gateway Blink, that Blink build we saw in the last game, I just feel like it's his best. But I am totally willing to admit that it's very biased. Because... I just like that style the most. It does seem really good when he does it. I'm a big believer. Because he also looked like he was going to win their last best of five based off another blink build. He just blinked ye old hero style, more like patience style. Am I right? And died. So many people don't even know who patience is at this point. 
But so far, another triple oracle build by the looks of it. And then we will be paying very close attention to exactly what comes down with the Twilight Council that I presume is happening. I'm presuming. First Oracle coming in is going to find a little bit of damage, actually. Now, it does get tucked into a corner, so it can be sacrificial. And that's why maybe Hero's not going to do it this time. I think he literally lost the Oracle in a best of five, having him go from this point to the south. So not looking to do the opposite. And I think it would have died, actually. There are three queens in the natural. It absolutely would have died. But despite that looking like a bigger gap, there was actually only one drone killed. Second Oracle is going to head over to the third base, but the Spore is now protecting the drones that are only now saturating the right side. The Oracle last gang got a really lucky timing. And the Adepts are actually being jumped upon as they try and go across the map to add a little bit of distraction. A couple more have been built, however, so they might be looking to still add some distraction. But the Oracles are not as effective as they were last game, which we truly shouldn't forget that they were more effective than they should have been. They did help add to Rainer making those last couple of drones while under attack. I still think Rainer was in a world of trouble. He just didn't know what was going on. But yeah, it all kind of came together. We do have the Twilight Council and the Forge together. And actually, after momentarily going for Blink, decides to change over into Charge. So this is obviously a difference. One that the Overlord of Rainer, even if it was close enough to get the scout, wouldn't really be able to tell, because it's pretty much the exact build that Hero did last game. And I said, you know, I think you can kind of assume that it is Blink, but if you don't know, then checking the third base and what's being produced there can give you some really good insight. Of course, the Protoss know this, so the Protoss might actually be building their Zealots in the natural, for instance, to make sure you don't see how much are being built on the third. But with Charge... I assume the Templar Archives, with the Robo, I assume the War Prism, and combine it all together, and we are getting that Charge Lot Archon attack that seems like it should kill Raynor, who is once again playing a Ling-based opening style, and yet doesn't ever seem to. I harped on this the last series these guys played. Now let's, let's, let's watch, let's watch. Rainer, I think, is feeling a little bit of confidence. Okay, he does have a Roach Warren. He doesn't build in Roaches. So that's the, that's the safety Roach Warren for now. Eventually he adds on Ravagers. And that will absolutely help once he figures out that this is a Charge Archon build. But so far, doesn't actually have any ability to scout that. The only thing he's got going for him is the third scout. He does see the gases be put down, so definitely not the last build. That much is a fact, but then what else could it be? And there could still be Stalkers building up in the natural. There could still be Zealots building up in the natural. There could be Archons building. Rainer just doesn't actually know. So that Warp Prism is going to pick up the two Archons, get on the front of the line, warp in those charge lots, and Rainer will only have plus one melee lings against plus... Holy shit, that was a good taste of strap. Against plus one melee charge Archon. Charge Archon should win. Roaches are on the way, as I believe he actually saw the Warp Prism. He saw it go back home and then move out. Um, and this is just a very safe thing to do. That stasis trap did just take away a bit of income from him. Income's actually not his problem. Larva currently is Rainer's problem. Perhaps the injects have been slightly missed at the very least. We see one and two being missed right now. Is that going to be enough to cause problems? I'm not so sure. That's already a decent army. The Lings do get a really good surround on top of the Protoss, and the Archons are forced to be picked up and evacuated, as the Zealots did get depleted. So. Rainer with actually a very standard hold of that. Now, I put a lot of emphasis on this build because I've really seen so many games in which it was actually supposed to win. Protoss was supposed to win. And then Rainer or whoever else makes this really desperate last second hold of pure Ling Queen. That's why I talked so much about it. But actually, I mean, if you get to those safety roaches, you actually build them, you're actually ready for it. It's not like this build is, you know, really dependent on that doing a lot of damage. You are getting your fourth base, you are advancing your technology and advancing your upgrades, so maybe I made that sound like it was some type of dedicated attack and that's really bad news. If it doesn't work, it's, no, actually. It just, it really feels like it should have worked in so many previous games of this one. But this was the probably the standard way of holding against it, all while getting up to a hive, up to 87 drones on four bases, 
All the upgrades on the way, too. Rainer is absolutely getting set up for this mid-game ZVP, but Hero is not far behind him. Only sacrificing a limited number of Zealots was really not the biggest deal. More importantly, the Archons lived. More got added on. Handful of Immortals, plus two attack finishing. And Hero absolutely can take on the Zerg forces. 30 armor supply difference with the quality difference of the two. Totally overcomable for the Protoss. High Templar is left behind, waiting for that storm to actually finish. It is far away from doing so. Not much defense at the third, and that is a lot of lings with plus one melee. Zealots and cannons might not be enough. Hero going to be forced to recall. Fortunately, we'll not lose some of the ones missed out in the recall. Basically, with that recall saying, I don't mind losing that positioning on the map. In order to keep everything back at home I'm totally intact. And right now, there's really no issue with that. But again, one of the bigger issues for a ground-based Protoss army is the potential of Broodlords, which Aspire is on the way. Raynor has had this option and then decided actually not to do it necessarily in many of their other games that have looked like this. But if he does get to the option of Broodlords, he does get to them safely, let's say a count of eight, then Hero's ground army is going to have trouble. Literally connecting with the Broodlords because he doesn't have Blink. And even if it does have Blink... Linking suicidally into Baneling is not exactly ideal. Rainer has split his army a little bit here. Most of Hero's army responding to that. And fortunately, that's not actually where Rainer's bulk of the army was. It's over on the left side, destroying all the attack defense, destroying all the probes, and looking to actually kill this fourth base. And then some, perhaps, doesn't kill all the probes, only 14 of them as the storms come down in the nick of time. And that Nexus will live. Some of the probes will live, but more just went down to the attack on the third base. So 26 in total. But Rainer did also just expand basically all of his Banelings, a lot of his Roach Ravagers, some of it getting caught in a Stasis Trap as well. And Hero realizes this is the green light. This is the time to go. And Rainer might not be prepared to defend. 20 plus Banelings have finished up here. 2 1 is done for the Zerg, plus 2 for the Protoss. Some units even getting untrapped from the Stasis. Hero, he's almost all in with this. Not quite, but almost. And it's getting worse as Lings get into the main base as well. But his army is super good quality. Storm's coming down. Archon's blocking out those Banelings. More Banelings are here, but deciding that it's not the opportunity to use them. We have a retreat from Raynor. Back to his natural, desperately going to try and hold here, knowing that Hero must be running out of steam. He lost 13 more probes, but he is still on 4 Nexus 50. That's actually not so bad. Hero will be able to reinforce at least a little bit, as long as the Warprism is alive. That dodges out of the Corrosive Biles. Immortals tackling much of the army and living to tell the tale. And now it's also some of the drones going down as well. Seven of them is not too bad. Rain is still on four bases, 77 drones. But obviously this base is no longer mining. And it looks like it's about to be no longer living. Storms coming down on the Banelings deplete most of them. So they roll in to pop the barriers on the Immortals, but not necessarily kill them. Two Immortals, three Immortals left alive. The War Prism left alive in a decent amount of Archons as well. Are going to try and make the stand on the offense. Rainer with all the corrosive Biles trying to actually get those connections. Will not be able to do so. Can't take out the War Prism either, which warps in more charge lots. And with the charge lots, a surround could be possible. And if surround goes down on those Ravagers, they are gone. The Ravagers, already looking to be in too little numbers to even hold to begin with, now have to be worried about those charge lots. They're running all the way back to the natural. We got some spellcasters coming out, but how much can they help? Where is Rainer's reinforcements? Coming out only little by little. Once again, Larva being an issue. Not that he has that much of a bank to use anyway. And it looks like Rainer is going to be forced into a Game 7 as Hero takes Game 6 and moves us into the final match to determine who is going to actually face Cyril in the Grand Finals. All tied up, 3-3. Three to three. No vetoes possible. And the last map is going to be Site Delta. It kind of means that it was no one's favorite. In the top left, it is Hero. And in the bottom right, it is Raynor. Who is most comfortable on the final map chosen? We're gonna see. Rainer has lost the momentum. He was up 3-1. He was actually even in some decent positions in the last two games that he lost. The last game, though, really performing as the theory of ZVP states, though. <laughs> you know? They had another game in the best of five a couple of days ago where 
I would consistently repeat, well, hero's army quality is better, hero's army quality is better, hero's army quality is better. And then Raynor would do just the perfect amount of surrounding, bailing usage, reinforcing, run buying, so that he actually ended up winning that game. But I swear, hero's quality was better. So generally, if you really picture the definition of like PvZ charge with Archon, it's the charge out Archon kind of holding, holding, holding. Storm comes in, obviously, at some point. Holding. Okay, the Zerg's starting to deplete itself and trying to make a tech transition. Okay, go. And then the Zerg player has to hold off on their transition and instead try and remax as much as possible. Trainer is pretty much doing, but had expended too much in the attack and could not get enough army back at home. Especially with some of those storms actually dropping on his bailings very effectively. A little bit of a larva issue. And not able to get any of the reinforcements up and running before a hero was already on top of his economy as well. So really quite the definition, the picturesque CVP, I suppose. If you're the Protoss fan, a bit of a nightmare if you're a Zerg fan. But Raynor has been pushed to the limits here before. Same with Hero. Both players extremely experienced at this point. Raynor is the younger player, and he didn't play Brood War, which Hero did, but still, you know, seven plus years, you stop really keeping track, I guess. And when you consider that both of them have made it to so many finals, that they both can certainly have the potential to win a nail-biting game seven. But Hero is the one with the momentum now. He's the one that's clawing his way back, and Raynor's the one that now might be doubting himself. And saying, well, gee, it's gonna happen again? Come on, like, let's not have this go down. Because every one of the pro gamers out there, I believe, has had a kind of reverse sweep. Not exactly. It wasn't 0-3, it was 1-3, but still. I'm pretty sure every pro gamer has had that. <laughs> Someone can go fact check me on it, but... The doubt might start to arise. Only after the game can you ask them for the actual feeling they had. Hero is going to go for something cheeky. This is a Void Ray first. And no matter if it's first or second, the idea is that you are, again, hiding information from the Zerg player. But it coming out first and foremost? There's a lot of options that could be happening on two bases. So this is even kind of scary. Because it could be something really cheeky, really aggressive. Maybe it's like a Twilight Council behind this getting charged. That would be kind of amusing. It's not, but just saying. Or it could literally just be a Void Ray first. And then they're going into Oracles, and they go into a third base, and everything's fine. But Rainer would not know. And now he has to pull the rest of his Overlords back, which might make a little more room for some type of a depth attack. Not resident glaives, because the Twilight Council only just not coming down, but some type of six or eight adept attack. That was a little less scouted in advance. A proper wall from Hero, hell yeah. Twilight Council and Forge coming down at the same time. You know, I'd love to see on a map like this is absolutely blink. It's a bit of the shorter, more concentrated map. There's like that one avenue down the middle that you're really focused on. Not to say that Zerg players can't get run by, they can get run by on any map, but if you get like a proxy gate over here and hit this choke, the run by would obviously come to the middle or the north, but run bys will always be a problem when it comes to the Zerg. It's gonna be charge, not blink. Okay, so charge coming out again, possibly right into the. Oh, I was gonna say the robo, but it came down faster last game, actually. I was gonna say possibly into the same build. It worked overall, it worked. But it's gonna be different here. It's gonna be very. <laughs> A heavy amount of charge lots, and I believe this is how he opened their series in the best of five. Ah, absolutely. This is, I think it's, it's basically exactly what he did. Instead of having to fake two gases, he only faked one. Because that's the only thing a Ling would maybe even be able to see. I don't even think it could. Maybe if it was... Yeah, it couldn't even see that. The Overlord's dead, obviously, but then that also would only be scouting this unless it moved. So he's not mining. We know that. Rainer doesn't even know if he has the gases. But Rainer did fall to this. Despite some, you know, attempts at a last second defense. 
and he might be falling to it again in game seven. Everything on the line, and Hero brings out the three base charge all in. You are still extremely dedicated to this, even though you're on three bases. Your probe count's okay, but you don't have enough probes to add on to gases, even if you do decide to transition. You obviously don't have any gas banking. You don't have a Temple Archives. You don't have Archons or Storm on the way. You don't have Blink that are microable. You have freaking charge lots. Once they've showed themselves and used themselves, they're not particularly great as the game goes on. But they now show themselves, and only now does Rainer realize that he is going to be under a lot of pressure. Will he be ready for this attack? He's got five roaches, seven queens, 25 lings, more queens on the way, more roaches on the way, plus one melee as well. But we also have potential supply block about to hit our Zerg player. The Zealots are stopped by a brick wall of roaches, and at that exact moment, Hero realizes this ain't gonna work. I am totally screwed if I continue investing into charge lots. He's gonna keep reinforcing as he had the bank, but the gases are coming online. The probes going into the extractors or the simulators, excuse me, plus two starts up, blink starts up, and Rainer is in no trouble whatsoever. Gonna get back to droning, gonna get back to building more upgrades, bailing us fourth base, roach speed on the way too, and Rainer should be feeling quite nice about this game. That is a lot of charge lots just still being added in, though, I must admit. 23 charge lots is probably a little more than Rainer thought that Hero would continue to dedicate to. But even then, even though they're actually beating the number of roaches right now, the roaches have the queens, transfuses, and micro on their side. Exactly what's coming down now, but the queens are gone, and the oracles come in. Laser beaming them all down, and now helping with the roaches. But the zealots did expend themselves. The roaches stand strong, and the zealots are now trying to get some drone damage done, in which they are are also unsuccessful in that. The oracles made that look cool, but at the end of the day, that was far too many roaches left alive. I mean, Rainer will hold once again. Now, he did lose almost all of his queens, and I actually might lose literally all of his queens. You go, girl. She survived. One queen survives, four more are already being rebuilt. That's not the biggest issue. Injects missing for this particular round, but then four injects at a time right after? I don't think it's too bad for someone who can also build roaches. But Hero really is trying to continue with some odd plays, I suppose, <laughs> to try and make sure that Rainer never feels truly comfortable. The Oracle's now at four, is still kind of threatening any amount of queens that make a forward position. They're still kind of threatening a single Spork Brawler too, actually. And they're still somewhat helpful, but now a fifth out on the defense. This is not the first time that I've seen Hero continuously pump out Oracles, either when he thinks he's going to be able to use them offensively, we've seen it, but we've also seen him realize they're still the only thing that's really helpful on the defense. And they certainly are helpful against the Lings that have now entered into the main base once they get recalled back there. Actually, I'm not sure they are getting recalled. They're still going for the offense. What the hell got recalled? All the Stalkers away from the third base, away from the fourth, on top of the Lings. Probe's still going down. Some Stalkers still going down. Roach is now actually going after the Simon X Corps, realizing Stalkers are the main bread and butter of Hero's army. That is going to fall, but was that exactly worth it? That uh, was all of the roaches on the attack, focus firing basically a single building, as opposed to trying to get into the probe line, try and stop the forge from upgrading, stop the... I don't get to disperse, you know, get into the third natural and main base as well. They all concentrated on that one building, which is actually not that slow to build. One of the fastest buildings, which is why you do it to, to block your opponent's expansions, because it builds really fast. But anyway, Hero has managed to deal with all of the run-by aggression while keeping the majority of his army alive and continuing to pump out Zealots with eight gateways at a time. He's also on plus two attack, almost on plus one armor. We got six Oracles helping out again as the Queens get pulled to the front. They really haven't had a lot of time to build transfuses, so many of them are going down. The Zealots are dispersing once again. They're all gone, but the Stalkers are left alive and the Stalkers are able to blink away. Void Ray also potentially giving chase to make sure that Hero doesn't die to a run-by, but once once again, Rainer has made the hold against the charge lots, against the stalkers, against the oracles, and he will be forced to once again replace some of that anti-air. But he is doing it so far. He is holding, and he's actually not getting leaps and bounds ahead when you might expect something to happen like that if they hold a charge lot attack. Three base charge dedication, and Rainer holds no sweat, no problem. The zealot player has to be like, okay, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> like, you think that's going to be really bad news for the Protoss. But Rainer really has had to take every subsequent threat seriously, so he's never really been able to just bust out 20 drones, get to five bases, and wash his hands of the whole ordeal. So Hero's at least made him make sure that uh, Zerg never felt comfortable.
But I think Rainer is now getting to a point where he's fairly comfortable. He's on a good drone count. He's on four bases again. He's got Infestors on the way, Hive as well. And he's even going a little bit onto his opponent's side of the map. That might be a little too aggressive because he's not maxing out. He does still have a gap in his supply that also needs to be concerned about adding technology. So he needs to also he probably wants to wait for that too. Already some technology added on with the Infestors though, and that is an excellent addition when you're facing Blink Stalkers. Ling run by Tri to the third base was denied. Hero still with the upgrade advantage, now working on double forge, is going to continue with the upgrade advantage for the foreseeable future. Robo finally coming down as well, as alongside a dark shrine, which I'm not sure Rainer has a ton of defense against. He has the spores, of course, but he doesn't have, like, spine set up. And he might not be thinking about it here. Things have truly calmed down and really evened up as well. Rainer really never got to get ahead. He always had to consider the upcoming attack and considering what can happen if you don't have the anti-air. Rainer's defenses were also kind of still razor thin. He has roaches left over every single time. But yeah, if those queens weren't pulled to the front, if they weren't in plentiful numbers and the six oracles had nothing combating them and the border, eh? That would actually be extremely bad news. So I'm gonna call Rainer's defense is kind of razor thin for that reason. And he has held on. Hero has made a game that looks choppy. Actually look kind of smooth. And that's certainly a hero special. That's some magic that he performs. Now he's on double robo producing immortals as Rainer does once again slap down the Ultralis Cavern. First and foremost, something he's done in previous games. And this is such a difficult game and map, I would suspect, to actually try to go for Broodlords. I've been mentioning it as a possibility, any chance that I've gotten. And that is an issue if the Zerg player is allowed to get there. But on a map that's condensed and getting even smaller as Hero continues to expand south, and on a in a game where it's been really back and forth and really hard to say, okay, I'm definitely ahead, I'm definitely behind. Yeah, Broodlords seem like a big reach. And ultras, ultras, uh, fairly seamless. Is best word for it to get into, considering with the upgrades you're already getting, and uh, not investing into anything that's quote unquote useless before they they turn into broodlords, right? Corruptor's not particularly helpful. The spire is still going to be planted down because this game could be going on for a while. But Rainer now has to worry about a maxing out Protoss army that has a real close jumping off point. So jumping from all of the static defense to your creep spread to your base and then falling back to static defense. It's kind of scary. Big Ling run by and these are cracklings jumping on top of immortals, but also a couple of Archons and crucially still very close to that shield battery. So two units go down. I think many more would have if the shield battery wasn't there. Or more Archons had been formed too. They came in reinforcement wise. 2-3 is done for the Protoss, about to have 3-3-1 three, three, as my light goes bonkers. And it's going to have that upgrade, uh, those upgrades finish as Hero moves across the map. Once again, Rainer's army is also maxed out, but the quality is on the Protoss' side. Even once those Ultras are added in, the quality still goes to the Protoss because Hero has already made some Immortals against those Ultras. I mean, even without Immortals, it's still a pretty freaking good army, especially in a choke, which is trying to abuse right there. But now with the Immortals as well, it's extra good. The Fungals have come down, popped a lot of the hardened shields, but the Force Fields also bought some time. The Archons actually took down a lot of Banelings as a sacrifice, and the Immortals barely still live, even though they were finally connected. More Fungals coming down, more Corrosive Vials also getting a Wombo Combo, and the Ultras do get to chomp down on a handful of Stalkers, but it simply looks like it's too little in too poor of a position, and it's too late to even save the Hatchery. Rainer was up 3-1 in this series and is now dangerously close to letting it all go. Hero will be the first Protoss in a long time to get to the finals to try and take on Serral if he were to win here, but Lings are coming through, Kraklings are coming through as the Archons have all gone away and the Stalkers are particularly vulnerable to that, so they have got to skedaddle. Supplies have evened up and that's not good news for the Zerg, but Rainer is still alive. 
and see if they can add in some of that comeback magic, some more run buys, some more baneling explosions, some great fungals as well could certainly make a comeback possible. But even though Hero was eventually dissuaded from ending the game, he did get a lot of damage done. A lot of units went down for Raynor. His hatchery went down. His drone counts pretty abysmal for a 15, almost 16 minute game. Raynor is not wrong to be looking at the spellcasters to be his savior. He needs some really cost efficient engagements. And the shark festers will very much be useful for taking down the stalkers. As far as helping to take down Archon Immortal, it's actually kind of a... It's hard to say exactly what will happen, but... Fungals could come down, chain fungals as well, and force the Protoss army to be completely surrounded too, because they don't have any mobility, right? That could happen, and a surround would still be good for the Zerg. But the other thing that could happen is that the Fungals root the Immortals and Archons, which are already facing melee units anyway. They're facing Lings and Ultras. So if the Archons are on the front, wash away the Lings, the Immortals are on the back, power down the Ultras, does the Fungal really help? Makes things scarier. But if we're also talking about an army supply lead for the Archon Immortal user, well, then maybe the Fungal doesn't help. The Fungal would pop all of the shields of the Immortal, though, and that's something certainly worth mentioning. Heroes kept all five bases alive and intact for the game. Now a sixth base is on the way, inching ever closer to Raynor's still very important fourth. Raynor actually going to try and make a move, hoping that the army wasn't in place, but it was with SimCity and almost finishing static defense. Still trying to pull him this way and that. The left side might not have worked, but right side will. As Crackling's on top of probes, 12 do go down, but the DT defense will make things relatively easy. Rainer. I certainly one thing infestors do, and that many infestors, 10 infestors do, is they are very good at buying time. Very good at making the Protoss rethink if they want to take the engagement, but when Heroes maxed out with this quality army with so many upgrades as well, 3-3-2. I'm not sure he cares. Oh, Neural Parasite was created, and that's an excellent addition. Hell, I missed that. Yeah, oh wow, that's actually taken out like half of the army. Very nicely done. Rainer actually gonna take down a surprising number of units. Hero forced to completely flee, and oh my good lord, Rainer's supply is so much higher than Hero's. Hero down 80 supply. The Neural Parasites were game-changing. Holy shit. So many units not involved in that fight. So many units fighting each other. And the Ultras were just having a buffet. Even Fungal's coming down now that Stalker's the only thing reinforcing. And Archon's still helping. No, Parasite, hello, range, please. There we go. And Hero is now down significantly in supplies. Still losing a couple more units. Losing his economy as well. And Raynor's Remax is six Ultras. Raynor... The Spellcasters, man, they worked out huge. I completely missed that Neural Parasite was an option. Totally, completely missed it. But that's obviously one of the best things that could be done against the high-quality army. Turn the high-quality army against itself. And Raynor, I thought, was going to be diving towards the Broodlords. As I saw the Greater Spire finish, I was thinking, okay, he's going to try and buy time. He's going to hope that he doesn't die anytime soon. But no. He was looking for that fight. Hot diggity damn, Hero losing 21 probes, but keeping all six Nexus alive. Now, he's not rich enough to produce six probes at a time, but still, four at a time is pretty nice. The crackling run buys could be even more threatening as we're on a less supply for the Protoss, less supply to actually move around and defend. Rainer, also don't forget, starting to run low on his economy. Oversaturation of multiple bases, actually lacking minerals on most of them. So, as much as this is a, a really good moment for Raynor, no doubt about that, he's got to be careful not to overextend because he does not have that supercharged Zerg economy that would often be giving him a 2,000 bank behind this. And the Ultras are a really good way to throw the game once they start to track, tackle Immortal Starkle Archon on the defense. 
Ultras are so good at wasting their lives against SimCity. For the love of God, don't do that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they are so good at throwing games. The Ultras want to give the hug, the big old bear hug. And of course, the Z units are always going to retreat away from it, unless they're forced. Unless the Infestor Fungal is your dad forcing you to hug that weird uncle guy. And then you have to give the hug. And that hug was very effective right there. Rainer now still up 70 supply, but Hero down to a disturbing 52, losing more very expensive units of his own. And once again, fleeing to a static defense. Aggressive blink forward to find at least one ultra. And the DTs were actually slicing away while I wasn't paying attention. And we're certainly helping to kill some of the units. I think the Infestors died to them. Maybe an Ultra. A lot of Lings also went down. Okay. All right. Hold on here. Rainer's only ahead by 40 supply. 25 of it in drones. His army also one of the most... I mean, fragile is not the right word. <laughs> but it's, it's one of the most microble against armies. If the Lings aren't there, if the Fungals aren't there, only Ultras is a terrible army in any matchup. Maybe not ZBZ, but in the other matchups, 100%. Only Ultras does not make the, the game one for you. Fungal on top of some Stalkers and some Probes, but we're actually running out of Infestor energy. So many have died, and we actually have Rainer choosing to replace them at this point, which again is a great move. They got Neural Parasite, they got Fungal. But Rainer has also started to have problems with his own economy. Like I was mentioning, he was already running low on actual minerals to mine from. His drone count's, in fact, healthy for that, since there's so few. But he needs another base. He needs more mineral patches to get those drones on. And now he has to worry about DT runbys. And he's got the spores, but he doesn't have spines or lurkers just to set it and forget it as far as the defense goes. And Hero's gonna continue abusing that, also abusing the blink. Nice snipe on the ultra, and the dodge away from the fungal was beautiful. Zealots and a single DT looking to do, do some damage on that base, which, oh, whoa, 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 that spore crawler is really injured. That's probably exactly what they were looking at. But they are now gonna go back home, maybe to help out on the defense. Zealots actually being able to warp in is not a terrific sign for Rainer. They really would have hoped to get on top of that base and then to see no reinforcements and figure, okay, Hero's 100% broke, but Hero isn't 100% broke. He's got his fourth base mining, not a lot, and he's got his sixth base mining a lot. And you could also add on the gases, in fact, and start to add in more Archons. Rainer adding on a hatchery, uh, one might be too late. He's one of the problems, because maybe he could have done it earlier instead of doing an attack or remaxing, or, well, obviously remaxing so he doesn't die to a counter is a Tricky decision, but, you know, maybe he could have done it earlier. He didn't. So now he's doing it, but after he already gave up so much supply, the supply has really been bridged, and at a time in which Hero has now decided to go for more run buys, I think, than ever before in this game. So the hatchery obviously has no creep spread to give it a little bit of extra sight. It has no spore. It has no spine. Could be difficult to actually get up and running, which is perhaps why Raynor is letting his army chill over there. Also threatening this third base, but this third base, it's becoming increasingly less valuable. It has a lot of mining on the gas, so it's not close to being it, not close to being worthless <laughs> yet. But you know, as far as the bases that are extremely important go, I'd say this one is the most important. This base does get up and running for Rainer. He's got 50 drones that can finally be not crowded. Thank goodness. And Rainer has appropriately split his army. You can really tell with the, the change of speed, the change of pace, what has happened here. Rainer gets this amazing fight. Hero's freaking panicking, trying to barely survive, throw back to his uh, static defense and reinforcements. He's still having trouble actually holding. Everything's desperate. Rainer's for sure going to win the game. He's feeling it. He's feeling the adrenaline. He's feeling the momentum. He's got the bigger army. His supply looks fine. He's even got some reinforcements on the way. And then SimCity, 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 Micro, 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 SimCity, DT, SimCity. And suddenly you look at your supply again and you look at what could be your our opponent's supply. You're kind of guesstimating, right? And you're like, oh shit. <laughs> like, I'm not going to win right now. Time to put the brakes on, go back to some good old-fashioned economy building, and then maybe even think about changing my technology. And when you do that, you gotta take a chill pill. 
So as Rainer takes a chill pill, gets the base, gets the technology, hero, ditto. He gets the base, he's getting the technology. Not necessarily Hive, or uh, Fleet Beacon, which obviously is the go-to answer to a Broodlord presence, but he's getting to Storm. He does have Blink, his upgrades have been amazing for most of this game, and they're always gonna be ahead of Rainers. So the Blink Stalkers could do it against the Broodlords, but that is the now growing threat. So we either decide, I'm gonna take on the Broodlords somehow, up against the Fungals, up against the Banelings, up against the Ultras, with Stalkers is one choice. Or you can try and avoid the Broodlords all damn day long. Which is getting harder again, the more that the map minimizes, the more that bases get mined out and they start fighting over common bases. But we're not at that point quite yet. There's this middle base on both sides. There's two more bases to the top side that are theoretically Rainers, but Hero could also take. So it's not the most condensed map. It's getting smaller as the minutes tick on by. The only reason that those bases aren't mined out is because it's been scrappy for the last 10 minutes. Oh, those storms are pretty effective. So many lings almost dying. Still many of them dead. Not sure that was completely effective, but there was always something else trying to happen at the same time. He was trying to get a run by onto this. Well, this is now the sixth, I guess. Uh, sure. But it didn't really work out. Hero Supply, now better than Rainer's. And that is because Rainer is affording very good, high quality, expensive units. That's why he's slowed down a little bit on the Remax. If he was still building Ling Ultra, I mean, Ultras are also expensive, of course, but he might be a little closer in supply. But I think the Broodlords are the right call. Hero is obviously going to be shy for a very, I don't know, Maybe he's getting less shy as the minutes tick on by, but he should be shy about trying to move out in the map. This is a really hard game to call when you look at only one player's perspective. I mean, I mean, even looking at Hero's perspective right now, it's still kind of a scary looking Zerg situation because he doesn't know exactly how out of minerals these bases have become. You can assume, but you don't actually know. And you haven't checked this top right base in a while, right? So like, what if it's up there too? And then for Raynor, I think the fear has been at any moment the Protoss army could appear. And are you ready to go? And here it is, right now. The army is here. The Raynor does have 10 Broodlords, 5 Infestors. That's really the most important thing. A couple of Ultras, I don't even know where they are. I'm not sure this is going to be the fight for Raynor, actually. The Storm is managing to hit the tail end of the Broodlords. Still alive, by the way, because the Broodlords are tackling the entire Protoss army basically by themselves. And with so little that shoots up, I guess it's kind of okay. But that was all, that was actually kind of scary in a certain light. Both players, I think, happen to be a little scared right there, but the Broodlord numbers are gonna be good enough. The Infestors did have the Fungals to throw out in case the Blink did happen. And uh, Neural Parasite also could have been used on top of some of the Immortals or Archons if the Stalkers did get aggressive. What a very carefully played situation for both parties. Rainer with, theoretically, the better army at this point. Right here with more army. Kind of flip the script here. Another fungal comes down. Let's catch too many units with the High Templars. Oh lordy, they are trailing behind. Fortunately, the fungal doesn't find them. Neither the Brood Lords. 13 drones go down to the attack on the north side, as well as the hatchery actually falling, but the lings, the cracklings, trying to do the same thing on Hero's side of the map. More probes go down, Nexus goes down, but static defense, SimCity, and Stalkers once again going to be the problem for Raynor, but here comes some fungals. Good looking battle this time around, as Ultras are also somewhat there to protect the ground army. Storms continuing to come down, though, is a real nuisance as the Broodlings are trying to kill those damn things, but even when Raynor focus fires on the High Templars, they actually aren't killing them before the Broodlings actually die. I have been paying attention. The other hatchery will go down and Hero will evacuate to a more concave area. So he takes a, a less bad fight, but he still has the problems of actually killing the Broodlord. That's so far the ace in the pocket here for Raynor. And if these babies had more upgrades, I think this would be the trick, but they only have plus one flyer, plus three melee on the ground. But when the Broodlings get washed off as fast as they are, it really doesn't look as impressive. It's their projectile or nothing. Hero back down to one last mining base. This time it's not healthy. It's been the only mining base for so long. 
He's running out of minerals. He must be thinking he's also running out of options. Those broodlords are a real problem for him. What can he do against it? Hope to find them all alone, away from the fungals, or at least, the very least, away from the ultras. Maybe if they get fungled underneath the broodlords, they'd still have a chance, because their upgrades are amazing. We're talking about plus three on the ground broodlings. If they're not washed off by an Archon or a Storm, they are feisty. But if they are, then it's just that plus one projectile from the broodling broodlords themselves. Up against plus three armor, plus two shield stalkers and whatever else comes along with them. So, I mean, even with that plus three melee, the fact that there's five armor upgrades, let's just layman's term that one, really bring it to a simple level. That, that's that's not a lot of damage coming up from the broodlings, which is probably also affecting their ability to kill those high templars, funnily enough. We had a game where Hero's lack of attack upgrades really hurt his chances, and now we have a game where Raynor's attack upgrades might be really hurting his chances as well, his air upgrades in particular. Raynor is also very much broke, even more so, as this base was once again ransacked, only just getting back to mining. Probes were long distance mining, as Hero didn't want to try and throw down a Nexus, especially with the army incoming, it wasn't going to last very long. Recall, I'm not even sure where is... I guess, oh, okay, to kind of split the focus as so Hero is... He's avoiding the issue, and that's exactly what he has to do, to put all of your eggs in the blink basket. Oh, unless the broodlords are totally alone! The broodlords are totally alone! That is what Hero was waiting for! Oh, three of them go down. I mean, that's, that's better than what you might expect. Five in total? Was it all five right there? Damn. I blinked and I missed it. But Broodlord's actually getting killed there, and a lot of the stalkers end up living. Meanwhile, the last mining base of Raynor once again is taken down. That's what I was trying to get to. Hero doesn't want to take the main engagement, putting all of his eggs into the blink basket. If every single Zerg army unit is with those Broodlords, that, that, that's too much of a gamble. But if he can dissect the army, then he might just be able to win, and he is getting closer and closer to doing so. He's once again back on this base, looking for its Sim City and its tag defense to make the defense happen. Rainer realizing that this must not be the entire army. The other army was somewhere. Where is it coming from? The top side trying to get a surround, almost goes to meet it. But at this point, he doesn't know exactly where he should be heading, which one is the better option. If he gets a fungal on any of these armies, that would be the better option. But time is taken away, and now Hero decided to go for the entire surround. The blink forward underneath the Broodlords, focus firing them down as the fungals went through. It didn't matter. The Broodlords died, the Immortals took on the Ultras, and that is it. Hero brings it back series-wise, brings it back game-wise, and will advance to the finals of Masters Coliseum 7 to face Cyril.